Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, back again with another video for you. This one not necessarily a repair video, but something informational. What we want to talk about today is how do you know if your catalytic converter is bad? All over my forum people are asking, I think my catalytic converter is bad. And let's face it, catalytic converters are really expensive in some cases, sometimes in the thousands of dollars. And you really want to be sure that it is bad before you replace it. Some say that uh, you may be able to clean catalytic converters. Honestly, I've never tried it. So I can't say one way or another whether that's going to be something that's going to work for you or not. Honestly, you're going to have to try that yourself. But what I thought I would do is I thought I'd give you a quick rundown on basically a couple of quick tests that you can perform to determine if your catalytic converter is doing its job. And I'm going to be using two tools in particular. One, a cheap infrared thermometer. And two, a bi-directional scan tool that can read live data. Let's start with the easy stuff by getting the bi-directional scan tool with live data. And let's use that method first. All right, I'm gonna first start by plugging in my bi-directional scan tool, which in the case of this Subaru goes in up underneath the dash here. And I'm gonna to have to start and run the vehicle, but I think it's worth at least talking about the job or function of the catalytic converter before we go much further. Catalytic converter is basically there to reduce NOx emissions. And what that is, is nitrogen combines with oxygen, and there's, it's really not determined how many oxygen molecules combine with the nitrogen molecules, that's why there's an X instead of a number, like H2O is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, whereas NOx is NOx, and that X could be any number of oxygen atoms that combine with nitrogen. It's bad stuff, it's basically stuff that creates smog. So they put these really expensive things on uh, the exhaust system to try to clean up these NOx emissions. And basically what the catalytic converter does is it gets really hot like an oven. That's, that's what it's supposed to do. It, it functions best at, I think it's like 1300 degrees, 12 to 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not sure what that is Celsius, sorry. And what it does is it takes that, those nitrogen molecules and those oxygen molecules and breaks them apart. So in essence, you want your catalytic converter to get hot like an oven. And, that, and that's basically what we're testing for here. So we're gonna monitor the efficiency using the O2 sensors. And this will only work in vehicles that are post 96. Uh, vehicles before 1996 didn't require an O2 sensor to be in the catalytic converter or any catalyst monitoring uh, within those, those fuel system strategies, so you wouldn't necessarily be able to do this test. However, you would be able to do my other test with the uh, infrared thermometer. So I'm going to start the vehicle up, and number one thing, we've got to get it up to temperature. So we're going to have to run this for a little while, get it up to temperature first. Okay, I've got it up to temperature and these are the readings that I'm getting. I made myself a custom data list and I set it up to where we've got coolant temperature, the primary O2 sensor and the secondary O2 sensor. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to raise the RPMs to about 2000 RPMs, somewhere between 2000 and 2500 should be good, just to make sure that the catalytic converter is hot enough to do anything. And then we'll observe these readings. Okay, and I'm, I'm kind of seeing what I don't want to see here. And that is, uh, what I'm looking for is I want my secondary O2 sensor to pretty much stay steady right around a half a volt. And I want my primary O2 sensor to switch back and forth rapidly, rich lean. That would indicate that my primary O2 is working like it should and my catalyst is working like it should. But kind of as you can see here, what I've got is, is I've got a secondary O2 that's actually kind of switching all over the place rather rapidly. Uh, back and forth across rich and lean. So this kind of says that, that my catalytic converters in the Subaru here aren't really doing their job. And just, just to be clear, on this Subaru there's actually two catalytic converters. There's one that's right up by the engine and then about a foot back from that there's another one. They only have one O2 sensor in the secondary catalytic converter so they don't truly take a reading of the efficiency of the of the first catalytic converter. They're just taking a reading of both, as sort of as a general thing. If if you do what I'm doing here, and you're seeing this these types of readings, then there's a good chance that that your catalytic converter is not doing its job. In fact, I would say that this vehicle might fail emissions due to due to NOx because of what I'm seeing here. Let's go for the second test and and actually check the catalytic converter's temperature just to see what we got. Okay, here we are under the Subaru, and you can probably not hear me so great because the engine's running. I've got the engine running at about that 2,000 RPM that we talked about. I have a uh, infrared thermometer here that I'm going to use to take the temperature of the catalytic converter, both 
at the inlet and the outlet. It's got a little laser that comes out, says what the temperature is. Be sure you get up under the shield. Here we got about 500, 490 there. This catalytic converter is not working like it should. Let's try the one in the back. Okay, so the inlet of this one is a little less at 343, 346. And about 220 something at the rear. This one's not working like it's supposed to either. Okay, I'm busted. Well, here in Ohio, we don't have emissions testing anymore, so I guess I'm good and I can still drive along. However, if I were to have to replace those catalytic converters, I would imagine it would be pretty expensive. And I would also say that this vehicle would probably fail for NOx emissions. And I'm sure you'd love to see uh, what a good catalytic converter does, so uh, why don't we do that for you right now? Okay, well, it was kind of obvious that the uh, Subaru failed. So I'm now in my Odyssey, uh, looking at the exact same numbers so and, I, and I'm also keeping the RPMs like around 2,500 2,000 I'm gonna back down a little bit and here's what our numbers are we're up to operating temperature and you can see the secondary O2 sensor is pretty much staying around that half a volt mark where I said that you kind of wanted to see and plus it's slow it's not moving really rapidly but you can see the primary O2 sensor is switching really fast up and down over half a volt. So the primary O2 sensor is doing its job. It's checking fuel trim. And the secondary O2 is just kind of hanging out there. This means that this catalytic converter is working like it should. So this is kind of what you want to see. Not a whole lot of switching on the secondary, but plenty of switching on the primary. Now let's check its temperature and see if that proves out also. Okay, so now I'm up under the Odyssey and I'm gonna to try to shoot the laser in between the heat shields here. So at the front, looks like I'm at about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. At the back, about 380, 390. So this catalytic converter is definitely doing what it should do. Well, that was quite the learning experience, wasn't it? Uh, we got a chance to look at catalytic converters that weren't working like they should and a catalytic converter that is working like it should. And as I said, and you could see on the Odyssey clearly how the secondary O2 sensor was kind of just hanging out at a given voltage where the primary O2 sensor was switching back and forth pretty rapidly. That's what you want to see. Unlike the Subaru where we were looking at that and you could see that the secondary O2 sensor was going a little more quickly. And also the temperature. The temperature was actually 100, degree, 100 degrees colder on the Subaru uh, at the outlet than the inlet as opposed to the Odyssey, which was indeed about 100 degrees hotter at the outlet than it was at the inlet, indicating that it was doing what it was supposed to do. So you have a thermometer and a bi-directional scan tool, which can tell you this information uh, and possibly save you thousands of dollars uh, whether or not you really need uh, a, a, a catalytic converter or not. Uh, yes, you can't rule out the possibility that it's an O2 sensor problem, but in my experience, many times, if you've got a PO420 code, normally that's what you're gonna see. You're gonna look at those O2 readings and you'll see that the primary and secondary are switching fairly rapidly together uh, or close to it. And you'll also, if you go to take the temperature, you'll find that it's actually possibly colder at the outlet than at the inlet. Anyway, I am Eric the Car Guy. I hope this information was helpful to you. Uh, you can always find me over at ericthecarguy.com where I ask you to go and submit your uh, automotive questions, should you have them, into our search function over there. Uh, answer thousands, literally thousands of questions already. There's plenty of stuff in our database. There's a real good chance that your answer is going to come up almost immediately. Uh, you can also find me on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. And I close with be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. And keep your tailpipes, or at least your emissions, clean.